thank you. Art can transform our perceptions. It can soothe the soul and it can inspire profound peace. We know this about finish, like receiving a finished piece, like that song, we listen to it, it, it impacts us, we take it in and we have this experience. But the question that we're asking this morning is, what about the art making process? What about, what if we turn our attention from the uh, kind of receiving or witnessing or experiencing a finished piece of art and instead really turn our attention to the process of making? And that process can be making art or crafting or really any physical realm process. Can anything, can any physical realm process be a spiritual practice? I think it can. <laughs> so welcome to the spiritual makerspace. I'm really honored and delighted to be here. I was so glad when Melon reached out to me about her idea of the spiritual makerspace. I, um, how many of you have been to a makerspace in real life or maybe to the Claremont makerspace in New Hampshire? Has anyone been to a makerspace? No, okay. Cool. So makers, oh, a couple of us have. Great. Makerspaces are really neat. The idea is, oh, I'll describe to you the one in Claremont because most of us are not so far from Claremont, New Hampshire. Uh, it's a beautiful big space that has that has a wood shop and a digital lab and a 3D printer and a long arm quilting machine and a bunch of sewing machines and a jewelry making studio and a metal shop and, and also painting studios. And the idea is you can become a member and you can either take classes there and use all those tools and materials, or you can just get trained on the machines and use them or the tools and use them to make whatever your uh, heart desires. <laughs> and the, really the idea is to come together to share tools and skills and knowledge to be able to apply in your own unique way into your own life and however you want to use it. And so this is how I'm, this is the context of the spiritual maker space of this, a, a place where we can come together and share tools that foster our own unique spiritual well-being. I had a, I would call it a breakthrough in my life when I realized that my spirituality didn't fit into any particular box. I was raised as a Christian scientist and I didn't quite fit into that box, although there were a lot of things I really love and respect about Christian science. And when I first came to Buddhism, I was very resistant to um putting myself into, into that box. And, and at some point I realized, oh, I, I don't have to. <laughs> I can allow my spirituality to be the weird, unnameable thing that it is. And when I give myself that permission, that's when my, I feel my spiritual life really flourishes. And in particular, when it, um, the way it interacts with my art making process. So I am offering you today, I'm sharing with you my personal practices um, that I hope may be of some benefit to you. Uh, maybe there's some aspect of something that we do here together today that you'll enjoy and do again on your own, or um, it'll trigger an idea for you to do something like this or something else that you do. Um, and if it's doesn't resonate for you or it just doesn't serve you may it disappear from your mind like a handprint in water so I am a painter 
and a social sculptor. Social sculpture is the practice of life as art. And the art monastery is my monumental social sculpture. Uh, the art monastery is an intentional community. It's 12 years old now. We spent the first seven years in Italy, various monasteries in Italy. And five years ago, we came to Vermont. And our mission is to cultivate personal awakening and cultural transformation through art making, through spiritual practice, and through connection with the earth. And we have developed a kind of way of looking at things. I'm going to share my screen again to show you the way of the art monk. So this is the way of the art monk. It was originally inspired by the Eightfold Path, which is the um, a Buddhist framework for looking at the world. And I was studying the Eightfold path and wondering what would it be like to apply that really directly to the artist's life. And over the years, I've honed it down along with in collaboration with the other art monks. And we've honed it down to these four petals with practice at the center. So we begin with a tune. And a tuning is uh, really setting our intention and clarifying or even asking ourselves, what is it that we're attuning to? So on the meditation cushion, you could be attuning to your breath in your, in our art making practice today, we'll be attuning to the breath and attuning to the um, marks that we're making on the paper, on the page. Uh, and that can really be anything that's very personal. What is it that you're tuning to or what is the atten intention that you're setting? And the next pedal is welcome. The, in the creative practice, this would be, uh, it could be brainstorming. It could be amassing material. It's uh, a receptive state where you're receiving and kind of unquestioning. So this is, um, very open, a welcoming place. In the spiritual practice, this can be a sense of allowing, allowing what's arising, seeing, recognizing what's happening, whether it's positive or negative, and um, meeting it. The next pedal is responding. In the creative practice, this is moving from the kind of receptive state of welcoming to a more uh, maybe rational or mind-oriented state. It's a kind of editing, a honing, a polishing. And in the spiritual practice, this could be the application of skillful means. Uh, how, do we, how do we respond to what's happening in the world? How do we respond to the person that we meet in the parking lot. And then finally, we come around to the last pedal, which is offer. Offering in the art making practice is sharing the work. It's making the YouTube video of your song and putting it on Facebook. It's um, sending a postcard that you made to your friend. It can be, of course, also having an art show, but um, this offering, there's a vulnerability in offering and there's the opportunity for connection. Uh, not every piece of art needs to be shared, but there is something about that completes the process when you share somewhere in the creative process. And in the spiritual path, offering is the practice of generosity, the practice of sending out what we've cultivated in the internal landscape and offering it out to be of benefit in the world. So that is the way of the art monk. And it is has been my approach to meditation is really at the center of my spiritual practice. And uh, so this way of the art monk has been a framework for me to 
uh, work with the connection between my spiritual practice and my art making practice. So I also want to show you a little bit of my work uh, and give you a little sense of uh, the kinds of things that I do. So I'm just going to scroll through these. These are all ink on paper. And uh, the lines I do with tiny paintbrushes or pens. And the line work, I, I'm showing you the pieces that I've made that have, the, have a lot of line work because we're gonna be working with line work today. And I find it to be a really powerful practice to see how, how much presence can you bring to each mark, to each line. This piece is three feet by three feet, just to give you a sense of the scale. So I'll zoom in a little. These little marks are just made with little tiny paintbrushes. This is a watercolor. And sometimes I work with a mantra where each stroke is, there's a, 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 an idea or a thought that I'm returning to with each mark. This piece is three feet by almost 20 feet. You can see it's a scroll. Sometimes I display it shorter, but this is, this is almost the full uh, size. And it's, it's all these little tiny stro strokes. I also want to show you some work by some other artists that I find really inspiring. This is Marta Elise Johansson, uh, and she does these pieces that I always think are pencil, but they're ink on paper, and they are these very fine lines and have this incredible meditative quality. This one, the space you took in my mind, is 112 by 20 inches, so that's what is that, nine feet by 20, with these PC lines so this i mean this is a this is a real practice <laughs> here's jennifer kent she does ink on panel and uh she also does a lot of repetitive mark making she's actually even though it looks like lines they're kind of like loops all oblong shapes and this is yelena james and ink and gouache on panel. So you can see I'm really interested in repetitive mark making and the uh, kind of intuitive process where you can let the marks lead you in a certain way. Maybe some of you saw Barbara Takanaga's work. It was, this was an installation at, in Brattleboro, not far from Springfield, um, where she made this enormous installation where each of those little marks is outlined three or four times. Just an astonishing amount of labor. These are other paintings by her, little dots. I think something happens to the mind also when we do repetitive marks like this. It's a, it's a, it's a form of meditation. And to also, I want to point out the variations. You can start out with that. You make a system. Okay, I'm going to make these three curved lines next to each other. And they shift and they shift and shift and shift. And um, you kind of follow them as they shift. Okay, so that is some work that I find really exciting. And we're gonna dive into our first exercise, uh, which is called, I call it tracing the breath. And this is something I, I can, I sometimes start um, when I come into my studio, I start this as a way of 
a kind of grounding before I begin. Um, and it's a literal, I was kind of looking for a literal way, like how can I really meditate with my paintbrush? So we're going to try this. Um, let's see, I'll stop sharing. Oh, I'll sh yeah, I'll stop sharing. So, okay, so does everyone have some paper and some kind of mark making tool with them? Yeah, good. Okay, great. So we are going to Let's see, I'm gonna um I'm gonna do mine with a paintbrush, but you can do this. Actually, maybe I'll do it, I'll do it with a pencil and then with a paintbrush so you can see. And I'm gonna demo, I'm just gonna turn my screen down so you can see my paper. And I'll just talk us through and um you can start as you understand, <laughs> as soon as you understand. Uh so the idea is we're tracing the breath. Ideally, start from one edge of the paper and you're going to make your way across to the other side of the paper. And it's kind of like an EKG for your for your breath. So if you're doing it with pencil or a pen. First, you take a moment to feel your the weight of your body resting on your seat. And then notice your breath. Notice the body breathing. Notice where you feel the breath in the body. And then on your inhale, you draw a, the line is going up on the inhale. And then it kind of evens out at the pause at the end of the inhale. And it goes down on the exhale. And then up on the inhale. And it is unlikely to turn out this little curved line that we're going to make is unlikely to turn out perfectly even. And the idea is not that we're making a particular drawing or that this is there's any intention to ever share this. It's totally process oriented. So the idea is that we're attuning to the breath and to the mark making we're signaling to the mind and body that we're unifying our experience through the drawing and through the breath and let the breath shift as you go. And this can be a real game of how can you, how can you really let the breath change? The, cha the breath is changing all the time. So it can be uh, really interesting to notice the ways that we continually control the breath. Okay, I'm going to do this with a paintbrush too, for those of you who are excited to be painting. Just get a little ink on the paintbrush and then um, you could do it the same way with the paintbrush where you're going up and down with the lines or you can go uh, where you're pressing down more on the uh, exhale and then lifting the paintbrush on the inhale and depressing again on the exhale. So we're tracing the breath, tracing the breath. So keep on do, let's do a few, a few rows of traversing the page. Mm 
Following the breath in, following the breath out. Let the paintbrush or the pencil or the pen be your anchor. Keep your awareness with the breath. When you notice your awareness has wandered, gently bring it back to the breath. If you're using paint, I think it's interesting to vary the amount of pigment you have on the brush so you can let the strokes get really pale. Let them get all the way pale and all the way saturated. Stay awake to the breath. Let the breath surprise you. Okay, we'll bring that to a close. And take a moment to pause and like roll your shoulders, look around your room, maybe do a little stretch. It helps so much to stay um, in the body and make sure that you're not, I, I, you can imagine with so much detailed work, I can get really like crunched down in the paper. So it's good to lift up. Okay, so now we're going to do another one that um, I like to call this unparallel lines. So it's a similar kind of meditation drawing uh, where we'll start. I'll show you again. Uh, well, I'll say before I even show you what we're going to do is this. This drawing is about divine imperfection. We're going to draw a million lines that are not parallel. <laughs> and um, it is the imperfections, like as we're drawing and there's a little tremble or it's strays, then the next line will respond to that. So we're doing these lines basically as close together as you can and allowing the allowing your humanness through allowing the lines to be organic and real so you can be thinking of wood grain or the gills of mushrooms and the way that those that kind of those lines or the marta elise johansson drawings where like the little tremors and the lines are so beautiful so um yeah, so that's what we'll be doing. And we'll be doing it by following the breath. So let me show you again. I think it's nice to draw a, a loose square in the center of the page. Somehow, sometimes having a, um, 
the full page feels a little intimidating. <laughs> and then somewhere, let's say about one third to one third of the um, square. Can you see my lines? Can you give me a thumbs up if you can see? You know, some yes, some no. Okay. How can I make this more visible? Um, I'll do it with the paintbrush is how I'll make it more visible. Okay. So, all right. So we made a like a loose square in the center. And so if you're doing with this, with a paintbrush, make it as like, make your, uh, your brush as a fine point as possible. And um, I think it's great to do this with a pencil or a pen. So, um, okay, so you make the first line, we're gonna go about a third, for, oh, one, one third to the side. But before we even do that, take a moment to feel the weight of your body resting. Oh, maybe take a sigh. Let your body relax. And then when you're ready on an exhale, start at the top edge of your box and draw a line coming down to the bottom of your box. And then as close as you can to the next one, draw another line and try to really follow what the previous line did. So I trembled a little there, so I'm gonna follow that in, follow that out and let there be uh, allow the variation. So as we do this, we're gonna really try to bring your full presence to this practice, to notice when your attention falters. And if you notice that your attention is faltering, like you're getting frustrated or you're getting bored, then stop and look around the room and take a breath and make a sound or stretch. And then, and then come back when you're ready. Do your best to begin and end each stroke with awareness. Another little tip is to try to move from your shoulder rather than from your wrist. It's like you're, you're moving from, from closer to the center of your body. And keep in touch with your breath. Now that we've kind of started in and we've got the feel of what we're doing practically, begin to, to bring an intention into your brush stroke. So I'll offer to you, maybe you have one, if one immediately comes to you about what your intention is for this, then great, go with that. And if something doesn't immediately come, I would offer uh, peace. But I'm, I'm, I'm calling in peace. I'm, I'm looking to access peace. I'm touching peace with this practice. I'm cultivating peace. Set your awareness in peace as you paint. See if there's some other, if there's any part of your body that you can relax more as you do this.
cultivate the feeling that you're you're tickling the paper with your drawing tool. You're just caressing it that the the touch to the paper is also embodying peace. Okay, let's let's pause that for a moment. Actually, you can keep going. If you're into it, you can keep going while I'm talking to you. Um, but I wanted to offer... <laughs> I was telling Sharon before we started that I, I knew I had more that, uh, that I could share at this time. <laughs> so let's see, I'm just choosing which will be the next thing uh okay if you're into this i say just keep going what i like to do is work from that first line over to the um one side of the box and then i go back to that line and work my way out until it's full um so but meanwhile, I'd like to do one other one, which is uh, um, more of a, it's a, it's another repetitive mark making and it's um, it just different shapes. So it's more of a, a, fl a floral shape. So I'll show you once again. Once again, we'll start with, a box. Oops. I'm using ink that I made from uh, wild grapes that I harvested. <laughs> uh, and make a dot somewhere off center. And then from that dot, we'll make these radiating shapes so um like a leaf a leaf shape like this so this is certainly more complicated than making lines and that complication offers some opportunities. It can be uh, more engaging to the mind, so it can be easier. Oh, so once you have those leaf shapes, then you can make the leaf shapes in um, the spaces in between. And I recommend on this one to rotate the page as you work so that you're always pulling the lines toward you. There's something about pulling the line toward you as you work that makes it easier to have a smooth line. So once again, we're connecting with the breath. and inviting a sense of peace. If you find yourself getting tense, or if your old friend, the inner critic, appears, you can say to the inner critic, hello, old friend, I remember you, I see you. I know that you're trying to protect me from pain. And right now I'm I'm painting with peace. So just bring your awareness 
to the shapes, to the breath. And let the shapes shift as they go. They'll get bigger. Maybe they'll get more pointy or less pointy. Notice the breath. Continually bring the mind to peace or to whatever your intention is. Welcome the shifts and the kind of evolution of what's happening. And you can work all the way out to the edges of your box. Okay, I think we entered into some kind of a time warp because we're, we're pretty much toward the end here of our time. So hopefully what this is, is doing for you is it's offering you that so this is getting you started and you can uh, come back and finish these later today or keep working right now. Um, I think it's so beautiful to create your own mantra, to ask yourself what, like, what am I needing right now? What would, what would support me in being of greater service to the world? How can I, how do I want to show up for my friends and for my family and for strangers and for the planet? Um, and then cultivate that by putting your mind on it and keeping your mind on it using for me using a visual i'm so visual that using this method is super helpful for me um and engaging the hands but maybe there's there's other things you can do this with weeding the garden or planting i mean planting seeds it's a beautiful thing to do with planting seeds or um sanding if you're doing a woodworking any kind of repetitive action you can infuse with meaning and with intention that is is what's really resonating for you right now. So is there anything okay, what do you think? Shall we share? Let's what how about we all hold up our just one of the things that you did all at the same time and then if you're on gallery view, we can all see we can see if we can see. Oh beautiful. So oh you guys. So beautiful. Oh, look at those colors. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Is there anything anyone would like to share about their experience or questions or comments or reflections? Anything that was enjoyable or really frustrating? I thought, I yeah. thought it was absolutely great i mean just you know when you sit down in the morning or especially i'll probably use it like two in the afternoon which is always my worst time in the, my whole life and <laughs> it's like i love that because it's just like 
you just sort of sink into the breathing instead of going, okay, now I'm going to be grounded and everything. So I really, really love that exercise. I can see doing that a lot. Thank you. Oh, great. Good. You're welcome. You're welcome. There's also, there's a certain amount of, there's a certain amount of relationship with this kind of work and Zen tangles. I don't know if anyone's yes. done Zen tangles. There's, um, there's a certain connection there. Uh, so I find this a little bit different. I also think it's great to really find your own mark making, you know, um, to share, to do lines or circles. Oh, also, yeah, just doing little circles. You can do them over and over all around the page or the same circle over and over on the same spot. Kind of like an Enso practice in Zen Buddhism. Any other, any other comments or reflections? Yeah, Tony. Okay, yeah. And then Rita, I, we'll hear from you next. I found it was very interesting the the uh, the art you showed us in the beginning, and some of the and some of the things. And I found this thing in nature. Oh, <gasps> oh yes! <laughs> Can you see that? Yeah. Um, these are these are uh, natural artists' worms, worms, and totally. uh, isn't that amazing that that gorgeous the between between um, isn't that something? so beautiful yeah oh, it's incredible it, it reminded me you know the repetition like the mushrooms and and the other things i made the connection between those things and uh and, and um it's it can be so inspiring mushrooms and all those things outside are are just so yeah. inspiring <laughs> uh thank you tony that was great <laughs> great rita did you want to share something Oh, let's, will you unmute and then we can hear you. Here we go. So, um, yeah. you know, the repetitive things that we do day in, day out, year after year for a lifetime, like mm. brushing teeth over and over, brushing your hair and doing dishes, yeah. oh, those are all line strokes. And, and each individual one is, is like meaningless or boring, but you put it all together and we've created a picture with our repetitive. Yes. 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 Oh, thank you so much, Rita. Totally. That huge painting that I shared, that's a three feet by 19 foot scroll. Those little marks came from, I visited an aquarium and I saw on the, on the I was looking at the sea anemones. And there was one stuck to the glass, like facing me, you know, and it took forever to be able to see it. But then I could see on the, it looked like fingerprints on the glass. But then I saw it was those little radiating lines all over the glass. And then I looked for a long time and I saw, oh, they're filters, you know, they're filtering water all the time. And they move so slowly. And each one of those was an incremental tiny footstep. And I just blew me away. I was like, this creature is making these exquisite patterns. I find them mesmerizing. And do they even know? Unlikely. And would anyone ever see it on the, you know, ocean floor? And those are our lives. That's what we're doing all the time. We're making these little incremental marks and we can't see what we're doing, but we're making this hopefully beautiful pattern. Yeah, Pat. So I have a rubbing from an ancient Hindu temple on my wall, and it's very much the same style of the lines and the drawing back and forth. So now I'm going to have to read up and figure out where that, where exactly I, that is from and, and yeah. what the meaning of it was. It's very similar. Oh, cool. Yeah. Great. I'd love to see that. Thank you. Susan, did you want to say something? Yeah, yeah um, it's a little bit more of a general question, if that's okay. Sure. Um, when you're in a maker space or, or the work that you all do in your monastery, does that include oh. sound? Obviously, you yeah. started with, yeah. Can you be a sound monk? <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely. Certainly. Yeah, I mean, we have a, a lot of musicians here, and you can you could do this kind of practice with sound too, for sure. Yeah, you could put yourself into a real trance state with that. <laughs> yeah. 
Beautiful. Okay, I don't want, oh, it's 11. How did it happen so quickly? Uh, <laughs> um, it's been such a pleasure. And let's just do one um, a, a final offering as a group to kind of uh, close the session. So close your eyes and maybe touch your heart if you want to, or you don't have, if you don't want to close your eyes, you could lower your gaze and just bring your awareness inward. Notice how your body feels. Feel the breath moving in the body. Bring your awareness into your heart and let the breath flow in and out of the heart. And then gather up any benefit that you experienced in our last hour together. Any joy or peace or curiosity, any, anything positive at all. Gather that up into your heart. And then think of someone specific or a specific group of people. Connect with them wherever they are. And then with your breath, send out the benefits of this practice to that person or those people. May this practice not benefit just me, may it benefit also these other people and all beings. I just wanna read one more time some of the lyrics from our going on song. I pray my rage is a fire that cleans me out and makes me ready to listen. I pray my pain is a river that flows to the ocean that connects my pain to yours. I pray my happiness is pollen that flies to you and pollinates your joy. Thank you so much.